Good day, ladies, gentlemen, future leaders of tomorrow, or rather, current leaders of today. As I stand here before you, I humble myself at this opportunity granted to me to share a piece of my soul. I am not worthy, and I'm still in awe, and I'm grateful for this opportunity at the suspicious state of affairs. Now, how many of us go through life hanging onto the belief that we cannot do something simply because we failed at it once before? Or worse yet, how many of us make up our minds of the failure even before pursuing the endeavor? Marilyn Vosavant once said, being defeated is often a temporary condition. Giving up is what makes it permanent. Perseverance. That without which the world as we know it today would be a figment of our imaginations, a myth. Take John and Washington Rubling, for example. John, an engineer who is continuously told that his idea for building a bridge connecting New York and Long Island was absurd, could not be done, impossible, impractical. He shared his vision with his son Washington, and together they would make history. However, after a few months after commencement of the initial stages of actually building a bridge, an accident on site claimed John's life and left his son hospitalized and bedridden, unable to move or speak. As expected, the critics, on cue, as though they'd been waiting in the sidelines for failure. Crazy men and their crazy dreams. It's foolish to chase wild visions, they said. But for 13 years, with the communication method of tapping codes on his wife's wrists using his finger, he gave out instructions on how the bridge should be built. That, ladies and gentlemen, was almost 30 years ago. Today, the 1,834 meter long Brooklyn Bridge stands majestically, used by hundreds of thousands of people daily. Perseverance. But that's just one example of millions. Beethoven, a composer, was deaf. Albert Einstein, a scientist, had a learning disability. Vincent van Gogh, an artist, was mentally ill. And yet, even with their shortcomings, their names are forever imprinted in history because they endured. Passion, that without which the world as we know it today would be a void, consuming the things we are, the things we love, and the things we never want to lose. That spark that ignites indisputable power to dream and make those dreams real. But we're not all dealt the same hand of cards. We're not all given the same opportunities to dream. 46 million African children have never set foot in a classroom, even with the abolishment of some school fees in countries such as Kenya, Malawi, Mozambique, Tanzania, Ghana, and parts of Uganda. Their boundaries are much higher. Their walls are large compared to ours. We make up the minority, not because we're special. We simply got lucky. I myself entered the gates of the University of Johannesburg on my first day with my brand new pens and rulers for my first lecture in Introduction to Engineering. Eager, determined, enthusiastic, a fortunate individual given a chance in a world of billions. Engineering 101, my journey had begun. After the completion of the Howe train, more than 35,000 hours and over 50 modules later, surviving subjects such as control systems, applied mechanics, and heat transfer, I stand here on the brink of completing what I believe is the toughest course on campus. Much like the Brooklyn Bridge, I stand here majestically, having faced challenges, silencing critics, those who said she would not do it, but finally pulling through. Reality check, though, the sleepless nights, the depressions, the hustling, the crashing of computer systems, and the liters and volumes of BioPlus, Red Bull, and coffee, all of that was for a piece of paper saying that I've made it through Engineering 101, just an introduction. The real course begins when I set foot outside the gates that have formed a comfort zone for all these years, when the real world, brimming with opportunities and screaming for emancipation and redemption, 
doesn't accept late submissions, or hand out detailed scopes as to what to expect in the next assessment, where miscalculations no longer mean supplementary or sick tests, but rather fatalities in society. I've been equipped with tools and I must now learn how to refine them, how to make them count. My success could not have been possible without my loved ones, family, friends, and the team of dedicated educators from the Mechanical Engineering Department, each of whom have planted special seeds in my mind. My heart breaks in a million places at the loss of my father, who lost his battle with cancer late last year while in chemotherapy. Though he met the girl that I was, he'll never get the opportunity to meet the woman that I'll become. None of us is entitled. The universe owes us nothing. I've learned that on your approach to life, don't be arrogant. There's always someone who knows more than you do. Don't walk blindly. There are lessons in every event, at every turn, in each and every moment. Don't let life turn off that flame that allows you to dream. The Brooklyn Bridge is a product of a dream driven by passion and perseverance, made possible by a single finger. Don't stop fighting. Your greatest weapons are your will, your drive, your determination. Don't lose yourself. Your most abstruse and intricate maze is your mind. Continue to feed it. Don't limit yourself. Soar higher than what your mind can conceive. 10,000 birds die each year from crashing into moving cars. Learn from that. Fly higher. <laughs> Don't go with the flow. <laughs> Create your own ripples and conjure up streams that will lead others to your ocean. And don't stop just because there are walls in front of you. They're just there to distinguish between those who really want it badly enough and those who couldn't be bothered either way. Randy Pausch, a computer science and philosophy professor from Carnegie University, in his famous last lecture said that, if you live your life right, the karma will come back to you and the dreams will find you. Well, I say, don't wait for karma. It might take your entire life for it to find you. Pursue your dreams now. Make them real now. Then karma will find you along the way. As I take a sigh of relief on the journey that I leave behind, I take a deep breath in for the one that lies ahead. And as I journey out on whatever path, in whichever direction, I aspire to design a purposeful dream, none like other before. In the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, we are all inventors each sailing out on a journey of discovery, guided each by a private chart of which there is no duplicate. The world is all gates, all opportunities. Many have come and gone, living empty lives, having wasted treasures, potential, and knowledge that some child somewhere in the world will never get the chance to explore. I leave you all with something to ponder over. Are you just another drop in the wind, just passing by? Or will you persevere with passion and make a difference with your uniqueness? What will you do with your life? How will you be remembered? Thank you. <laughs>